The correct design of orangutan enclosures for those hundreds of orangutans that have to suffer captivity at this point in history is extremely important for them. Now, zoo designers often strive to make their exhibits look as natural as possible, and this is understandable. However, this often creates a very impoverished environment for the orangutans, and I'll quickly explain this. First of all, you may see an enclosure which is full of vegetation and greenery, but orangutans will destroy all the vegetation when confined to a small plot of land. And so these vegetations is often protected by electric wires. So from the visitor's perspective, they see a, a lush enclosure like the rainforest. But from the orangutan's perspective, it lived in an impoverished environment full of electrical wires which hurt them if they stray from a very narrow space where they're confined to live. The second aspect in, in, this, in the strive to make the enclosure look natural, they want to put in natural substances such as wood. Unfortunately, orangutans will destroy any wood which is of usable diameter for them. That is, if they can grip it and use it for locomotion as they would naturally do, they would end up breaking it. And therefore, they tend to put these big logs in, in the way. And these are not good ergonomically or useful for the orangutan for climbing because orangutans can't really use those. In fact, uh, metal enclosures, uh, metal frames can actually be a lot better for the orangutan because it's ergonomically much more suitable for the size and all the, so also the vertical nature of how they move through the rainforest. So metal frames are actually far better. Often people think, oh, they must get hot, but because they have a large surface area to volume ratio, that they don't get hot, the heat very easily um, disperses from the metal frames. And therefore, the natural looking climbing frames are often the worst for the orangutans, and the um, more unnatural looking ones are actually a lot better. In addition, we have to remember Orangutans naturally are thinking about conserving energy. This is how they survive in the wild, and they use, unfortunately, the same thinking in captivity. So if you build a nice climbing structure, and there isn't a reason for them to move through that climbing structure to get food uh, and, and shelter and shade, they simply will take the most easiest route. So you have a elaborate climbing structure, and they just walk along the ground to get from A to B. So we have to design these enclosures so the orangutans know, does it make sense, to get food, shelter. Um, they need to use the climbing structures in the way that uh, they've designed to meet the way they mentally see the world of energy conservation and being as efficiently as possible to get from A to B. So the other aspect, of course, is shade. Orangutans live in the world of shade in the rainforest canopy, and they can suffer greatly from being exposed by too much light. And so if you build um, climbing structures that don't provide adequate shade, it, it's really an impoverished environment, and the orangutans have to use a very small part of it to, to seek shade. When I designed enclosures um, before for orangutans, we, we actually put the design through a solar scope. So, you know, each time of the year, each time of the day, that these platforms where orangutans could sleep and rest, at least two of them were in shade at, at one time. Shade is extremely important. So in general, um, the most unnatural looking enclosures um, often can be the best for orangutans. For example, cages. Um, sometimes orangutans move from a cage to an open enclosure and they have a decrease in welfare. The reason being to an arboreal species such as the orangutans, volume, not surface area, is far more important. And cage provides maximum volume for the surface area land, where the open enclosures, um, because of jump distances and reach distances, may actually provide them a lot less usable space from the aspects of being an arboreal animal. Now, what we're going to do is, with our partners, is develop actually 
rainforest enclosures, large areas where the um, orangutans that cannot go back to the wild um, can live their lives in a rainforest environment. And remember, this is how they evolved over millions of years. So natural is always good. But the other thing that we hope to develop with our partners is that the orangutans are allowed to breathe in the enclosures. And obviously that's an extremely important welfare aspect that they're allowed to breathe and live as natural life as possible within the rainforest canopy. But from a conservation point of view, having these natural raised infants in these rainforest enclosures, um, learning how to survive in the rainforest and getting natural rainforest food makes them perfect candidates for reintroduction later in their life. And so there's not only a welfare aspect, there also is a conservation aspect. And from people who get to visit these orangutans, one of the most important things is, as I've discovered, um, seeing orangutan zoos over many years, taking the orangutan and displaying outside of the environment, and especially in impoverished environments, at least from the perspective of the orangutans, we see an ugly caricature of the magnificence of the orangutans. And therefore, the real education, although it may be harder to see and it's more of a challenge to see an orangutan in a rainforest close, enclosure, the education aspect is far greater because people get to see the magnificence of these animals as they truly should be um, living and, and surviving in a rainforest canopy. And that's probably the best education and connection we can give to people to learn and love and care for these magnificent persons.